start the academic session. We would like to invite our Honorable Principal Madam, Dr. Shoma Ghosh, to deliver her welcome address. Madam, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Pritha Kundu. As we know that COVID-19 pandemic has uh, devastated our life, our society, our culture, actually our everyday day to day life. Most uh, irrecoverable loss is the loss of human lives. There are, it is actually COVID-19 pandemic has created challenges which is more than mere health crisis. It has affected our society, our economy, our culture, and uh, our education system and everything. It has created new challenges for the in egalitarian uh, societies for unequal existence. It has created challenges for governance, governance in every sphere of life, including governance in education, governance in polity, and everywhere. Even it has created challenges and threats, posed threats to our basic domestic lives. But still, as we have started, we will have to overcome, we shall overcome, and we will think in a positive way. On behalf of Hiralal Mazumdar Memorial College for Women, as a principal, I, Dr. Shoma Ghosh, without wasting much time, would like to welcome all the honorable speakers in this web, uh, online platform of our college. And we will definitely get enlightened by this valuable illuminating speech delivered by them. I better invite Dr. Shonali Mukherjee, Head Department of Economics, to proceed further. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Thank you for your encouraging welcome speech. And thank you, Dr. Pritha Kundu, Head of the Department of Department of Women Studies. आज हमारे प्रथम वक्ता होले हैं डॉक्टर ओरिंडम मोंडोल। अमी एक तो बांग्ला ते ही बोले निच्छी कारण उन्हीं यूएसए ते थे को बांग्ला बोलते खूब पसंद करें देखलाम। आमला खूबी गोड़ दी तो ताके आमादेर मुद्दे पे डॉक्टर मोंडोल एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर और एवं चेयर ऑफ द इकोनॉमिक्स इन डिपार्टमेंट New York State University te tini PhD koren labor economics financial economics development economics and macroeconomics e adhyapana o gobeshonar kache tini 15 bochorer o beshi obhiggota arjon korechen tar published articles chapters and books er naam korte gele ajke onekta shomoy chole jabe tai shomoy noshto na kore borong amra tar kichu mulloban boktobbo shune ni तार आगे आमी समस्त पार्टिसिपेंट दर का चे एक्टर ही उन्हें रोत कर बो अपना रा कोनो प्रेस कीन बाया कोडे प्रेजेंट कर बिन्ना एवं कोनो माइ माइक्रोफोन शब्द म्यूट रखूँ माइक शबर एवं कोनो प्रश्नों तक ले अपना रा प्लीज चैट बॉक्स में दे बिन आमादे शोमाए मतो आम्रा रिसोर्स पर्सन दर का चे आंसर � Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are absolutely audible. Uh, was here. So, why is that? Hello, Dr. Mondor. Uh, ah, I, 
I I welcome Dr. Arindam Mondol on behalf of the entire team of Hiral and Mazumdar Memorial College for Women, and we are eagerly waiting for his illuminating speech. Over to Dr. Arindam Mondol. Hello, sir. I think there is some network problem. I can see him, but can't hear him. Madam, ona kya ekbar rejoin kutte bolun. Possibly ona uh, connection issue ba kichu problem hotche. Ona microphone on aachi, kintu oni amre shunte paachi na ona ke. Microphone to on aachi na. Hmm. लिखेना सर आपने की सुन बोलছেন কিছু আপনি বলুন হ্যালো স্যার না আমরা শুনতে পাচ্ছি না আমরা শুনতে পাচ্ছি না আপনাকে আপনি এখান থেকে কিছু করা যাবে না ম্যাম স্যার এর ওখানে নেটওয়ার্ক কোনো ইস্যু হচ্ছে সেই জন্য অডিওটা আসছে না তাহলে কি আমরা নেক্সট স্পিকার কে আগে করিয়ে নেব ও স্যালি কি ওকে লেট মি ট্রাই সামথিং এলস ঠিক আছে আগে একটু চেষ্টা করি सर कि तो शुना जा सर सर हम कि नेक्स्ट स्पीकर के एक आगे बोलिए नब शाश्वती मैडम के ओके okay. 
আমার মনে হয় আমরা শাশ্বতী ম্যাডাম কে একটু ডেকে নিই বরং আগে ইয়েটা হয়ে যাক আমার সোনালী ম্যাডাম আমার মনে হয় যে আমরা নেক্সট স্পিকার কে একটু রিকোয়েস্ট করি ওনার হয়তো কোনো ইস্যু হচ্ছে আমি মনে হচ্ছে আপনি কাইন্ডলি ওনার ফোন নাম্বারটা আমাদের যারা টেকনিক্যাল টিচারস রয়েছেন তাদের দিয়ে দিন ওনারা ডক্টর মন্ডল কে একটু হেল্প করে দিতে পারেন যদি ঠিক আছে ঠিক আছে যান্ত্রিক ত্রুটির জন্য পাওয়া গেল না তাই আজকে আমরা আমাদের পরবর্তী যিনি বক্তা তাকে একটু সামনে নিয়ে আসি ডক্টর শাশ্বতী চৌধুরী সহযোগী অধ্যাপক প্রাক্তন বিভাগীয় প্রধান অর্থনীতি বাণিজ্য ও ব্যবসা প্রশাসন বিভাগ সেন্ট জেভিয়ার্স কলেজ দু থেকে তিনি এই বিভাগের সঙ্গে যুক্ত এছাড়াও সেন্ট জেভিয়ার্স ইউনিভার্সিটিতে গেস্ট ফ্যাকাল্টি হিসেবে তিনি কর্মরত তিনি অধ্যাপনা করেছেন ভারতীয় বিদ্যাভবন ইনস্টিটিউট অফ ম্যানেজমেন্ট সায়েন্সেস কলকাতা এবং আইএমটি সেন্টার ফর ডিস্টেন্স লার্নিং গাজিয়াবাদে অতিথি অধ্যাপক হিসেবে ডক্টর চৌধুরী তার স্নাতকোত্তর বিশেষ বিষয় নিয়েছিলেন স্পেশালাইজেশন ইন অ্যাডভান্সড ইকোনমিক থিওরি অ্যান্ড ডেভেলপমেন্ট ইকোনমিক্স এবং তিনি ডক্টরেট করেছেন কলকাতা বিশ্ববিদ্যালয় থেকে দু হাজার পনেরো সাল থেকে সেন্ট জেভিয়ার্স কলেজে ডক্টর চৌধুরী সহযোগী অধ্যাপক হিসেবে নিযুক্ত আছেন এর আগে দু থেকে তিনি এই একই বিভাগে সহকারী অধ্যাপক ছিলেন দু থেকে তিনি সেন্ট জেভিয়ার্স ইউনিভার্সিটিতেও পড়ান ডক্টর চৌধুরী এফ আই পি এর অধীনে টিচার রিসার্চ ফেলোশিপ অর্জন করেন তার লেখা প্রকাশিত হয়েছে বহু পত্রিকায় যেমন মডার্ন ইকোনমি বিক্ষণ সেজ ইন্ডিয়ান জার্নাল অফ হিউম্যান ডেভেলপমেন্ট ইত্যাদি তার প্রকাশিত কিছু বইয়ের নাম ব্যবসায়িক অর্থনীতি ও পরিবেশ অর্থ ও আর্থিক ব্যবস্থা ব্যবসায়িক অর্থনীতি ও পরিবেশ নীতি ও সমস্যা তিনি নিয়মিত সম্পাদকীয় কলামে লেখা দিয়ে থাকেন বিবিসি রেডিওতে তিনি পরামর্শদাতা অর্থনীতিবিদ হিসেবে আছেন এছাড়াও বহু রেডিও ও টেলিভিশন অনুষ্ঠানে তিনি বক্তব্য রাখেন ডক্টর শাশ্বতী চৌধুরী আপনাকে স্বাগত জানাই Uh, I extend my thanks to Principal Ma'am, Dr. Shoma Ghosh, for inviting me, and also the webinar organizing team, especially Dr. Shunali Mukherjee, the head of the Economics Department, who has been especially instrumental in inviting me for this webinar. Uh, it's a great, great pleasure talking to all of you today, to all the participants and the uh, people who are present in this webinar. Uh, and I'm going to share my latest work basically with all of you and uh, I, i would like to have also your responses regarding it now we all know that uh, we are living in very uncertain times and in these very uncertain times i mean this this type of world we have not even thought of even in our wildest dreams even some months ago it's not the fact that it's not only a fact that we are seeing and facing millions of death and infections the world over but mainly what we are witnessing is a total change in the economic order a total change in the behavioral aspects of the people and also what we are under we might undergo in the post covid scenario is some behavioral changes which might have some long lasting impact on the human society as a whole 
since the name of the topic that you people have given for the webinar is to live with the pandemic, the ultimate challenge of human society, I felt that uh, the, the topic that I have taken up today, that is the role of social capital and the pandemic, I think it's going to go a long way in shaping the behavioral pattern and ultimately the economics of the world as such. Now, we all, uh, before I start my presentation, uh, can I just uh, start my PPT? Can I share my PPT, ma'am? Hello? Can I share my PPT? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Can you share Madam ki permission diye dao, uh, PPT share karat channel? I'm sharing my PPT, okay? Yeah. 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 Can all of you see? Yes, and we can see it. Oh, thank you. So, uh, the name of uh, the title of my presentation today is Social Capital and the Pandemic. And before I start off with my presentation, Uh, I would like to say that the most important thing that we are very much interested in is how will the social and economic behavior interact in times of the epidemic. So this is very important. Basically, we want to understand the dynamics of the infection. And that is that will be presented to you in a model which is very much uh, like popular in uh, epidemiological circle. And it is known as the SIR model, S-I-R. Here, SIR basically denotes susceptible, I denotes infected, and R denotes recovered. And this SIR model is an example of a simple search matching setup. And this model, you know, is very much similar to the diamond model that was proposed by a Nobel laureate, uh, Peter Diamond, in 2010 in his seminal journal for political economy paper. Okay. Where he says that it's a very, he, 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 he talks about an island. Uh, because island here will denote a closed economy setup. And he says that in that island, there are only coconut trees. In that island, there are only coconut trees, you know. And uh, there's a taboo in that island that anybody who will, uh, who will try to eat or pick coconut from a tree, basically, he cannot uh, consume that coconut until and unless there is also another person who will be consuming a coconut. That means there needs to be a matching between two people who goes up the trees, coconut trees, picks up coconut, then exchanges each other coconuts and have it. So that is the societal taboo in that society, according to Peter Diamond. So we see that, and there's a cost of uh, climbing those trees. So if I do not find a matching person who is also going to climb up a coconut tree and get a coconut and then exchange it with my coconut and then only I can have that coconut. So there is no point me only climbing that tree. So we need to have that matching person. So this such matching setup was explained to us long ago in 1982 by Peter Diamond. Now we can use that simple coconut diamond model also here so here, as you can see in my slide, I have the change in the infected population. Now, in this pandemic situation, what do we see? We see that there is a pool of infected population and there is a pool of people who are not yet infected but are susceptible to this infection. So, as this susceptible population comes in contact with the infected population, what we essentially see is that the infection rate rises. Okay. So here, my beta denotes the contact rate or the infection rate. And this will obviously come only when the susceptible population comes in contact with the infected population. So we have beta into susceptible population into the infected population. And we also have a recovery rate of the infected people. And if we consider gamma to be that recovered rate, so we have minus gamma into the infected population. 
So we see also in these COVID times that a fast increase in the infected population when both susceptible population is high and the infected population has reached a sufficient threshold level. So we find that in this model, the rate of infection is given by ultimately at the end of the day is given by beta by gamma. But the whole situation changes. The dynamics of the whole situation changes once we bring in the concept of lockdown. Because as soon as we bring in the concept of lockdown and social distancing, the whole dynamics undergoes a change. Because lockdowns can be potentially very effective because they can, they can reduce the susceptible population coming in touch with the infected population. And if I consider theta to be the lockdown rate, and if the value of theta is less than one, then we can say that the infected population will gradually get reduced. And before the lockdown, my key parameter was beta by gamma, but now my key parameter has changed into beta by gamma into theta squared, which is less than the previous R. That means my infection rate is slowly going down according to this model. Now, why am I bringing all these mathematical calculations here? Just to enlighten one very simple thing. Now, if you look at this graph, this graph is that of the Hubei province. I hope it uh, rings a bell uh, in all of your minds because Hubei was the first. Hubei province was the first province in China where the COVID-19 virus was detected. Now, this whole data is from the Hubei uh, province, and here we find, if you look, you might not be able to read the numbers correctly uh, because it's very, uh, not very clear, very hazy, but I think you can look at the colors very clearly. If you see here, you can see the purple color. Purple color, that means at the initial stage, when the virus was spreading in the Hubei province, we find the rate of infection rising very fast. Here, the value of R0, the, uh, sorry, the value of R, because lockdown had not yet started, the value of R was very high, around 3. So till here, we find the value of R around 3, very high, because they have not yet started with the lockdown. Now, when the Chinese government realized the highly infectious nature of the virus, they went for a total lockdown in the Hubei province. And what we noticed that in the later part, as lockdown slowly started to show its uh, effects, we find that slowly if you look at the red part, the red part is the rate of infection. Now we are looking at not R, but the later one, R0. It has fallen below 1. Okay, and the yellow part it is falling very rapidly. That is, if R zero is below zero point five, so this red part is if R zero is below one, and this yellow part that infection rate will fall all the more faster if R zero is below zero point five. So that is exactly what happened. Now, why basically I am showing all these things to all of you is basically this that beta, that is the rate of contracting the infection. It is not simply an immunological parameter because it also depends on how successful the economies have, have been effective in doing the lockdown in their respective countries. That is a point that I'm, I'm basically trying to hammer at. That, uh, okay, uh, the immunological part of the virus is very important, no doubt. But if we had gone effectively to, with the lockdown and the social distancing norms, then obviously we could have seen some effect in terms of the rate of infection slowing down. And yes, many economies in the world have really seen this because we find that uh, when the unlocking phase of uh, the economies have started all over the world, we find that there is a sea change in how people are now experiencing their lives uh, the workplace, here now digital uh, digitalization is going to play a very, very important role. Even in factories, we are trying to look at those type of work where less contact is possible, so on and so forth. So every sector in the economy is gearing up to face this challenge, keeping in mind that uh, the less contact is made, the more and more uh, the rate of infection in the economy is slowly going to go down. So 
this is it so we are now basically we have entered a, 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 a post lockdown uh, a post lockdown scenario right at this point of time and uh, we have also entered a situation where basically we uh, we can now analyze whether lockdowns were effective in bringing down the infection rate all over the world because as we know that this was the first time in the world that we are witnessing uh, a lockdown of this kind that each and every economy had gone under lockdown so we we do have a large number of countries at this point of time to analyze this phenomena now after all these things what i will do now is i have resorted to world value survey wvs they provide data it's it's available in the internet and it's free data it provides data on socio cultural and political change worldwide it consists of national sample surveys in over 90 countries which uses a common questionnaire with variables on beliefs values economic development democratization religion uh, social capital gender equality you name anything you get in that uh, questionnaire in the data that they have now in that data what has been pointed out is very important it has been pointed out that northwestern europe have citizens who value trust a lot and they have no qualms in trusting their governments and fellow citizens in comparison to their southern and eastern european counterparts so when the world value survey asked the swedes whether most people can be trusted more than 60% of the swedes answered in the affirmative while in italy only 30% answers in the affirmative and in romania a measly 7% have trust in the people and if if you go to ask them whether they trust their government that is far more less now there is another study apart from the world value survey study there is another study which is called the european social survey uh, there is another uh, data set which is known as euro barometer they ask respondents to rate their trust in politicians on a 10 point scale so they are also we find that in 2018 the dutch averaged 5.4 the polish people 3.1 the french and the german in between these two figures and in one in eight bulgarians gave their politicians a zero so they do not trust the politicians so what exactly i am going to bring into my uh, uh, into my analysis is two types of numerical values one is i'm talking about trust and this trust values have bought from the sources that i have already mentioned and i am going to talk about how effective the lockdown was and how to understand how effective the lockdown was i take recourse to this uh, government response stringency index now this data is collected from the publicly available information this is also freely available by a cross disciplinary oxford university team of academics and students from every part of the world okay and it is a composite measure based on nine response indicators so within that nine response indicators we have school closures whether they had closed the schools at the right point of time whether what places were totally closed whether the country had gone for travel bans so all these things were taken these are some of the three important parameters within the nine parameters and they have a value from 0 to 100 and 100 implies the strictest response now i have no qualms in sharing with all of you that india had in terms of the government response stringency index the highest score one of those countries i mean many countries had a good score india was around had many days that it uh, response stringency index was 100 so which implies that this is just a number this scoring it does not in any way can be interpreted as effectiveness of a country's response it tells us that country has closed the schools the workplaces had given travel bans but how if it was effective in that economy that can also that cannot be analyzed from here that can be analyzed from the next figure that i have that is whether you really trust the government in doing that so that is what I, i was telling you people this is india's government response stringency index you can see that from march onwards the response stringency index is going on higher so from the time our lockdown started you can see it's 100 march to april it was 100 29th april 
2020 it was 100 then it was a slight decline and then gradually the unlocking phases and gradually you can see the decline in the context of india so in the context of stringency index uh, we have done fairly well but then the question remains then how come our infection rate is so so high so as along with this many other countries also share the same situation so i'll be focusing on some of the countries this i'll come back to this slide where we have the stringency and the trust parameters and this is the infection parameters okay uh, i'll just come i just want to say one thing what has been found out basically that in countries where you know the lockdown stringency or 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 in other words if i say the trust is very low in those countries the stringency of lockdown has been essentially been very high and in countries where trust levels were low in those country i mean uh, uh, the stringency index was low in those countries the trust levels were essentially high so this uh, a phenomena was more or less observed and that set me thinking because then i i went into the various countries to find out what type of stringency they were following and what was the trust parameter if i take the classic example of romania romania is an eastern european country now uh, i hope many of you will remember the romanian dictator nicolae ceausescu now after just after the overthrow of ceausescu you know there was food riots in the country and people experienced uh, uh, a scarcity of food like anything you know and so they they were the first country in europe to really take the covid-19 virus very seriously because they had seen quite worse times in uh, in uh, in the past and so and they were also very suspicious of the institutions they were very suspicious on the government the people are unable to rely on public good will and uh, the government also responded to the covid-19 with a very very harsh lockdown how harsh their lockdown was can be explained by the fact that if you look at the fines if you look at the fines that were issued from march 24th to april 19th what you will see that around 200000 fines were imposed worth 85 million So there was, I mean, I mean, fines because even if they had to go out from their homes, even to buy grocery, they had to fill up a form where they have to see the reason why they are going out of their homes. So this was the stringency of lockdown that Romania faced. And Barbara Matisku, a very very uh, well renowned politi political sociologist, says that Romania is the only country in Europe which was uniquely equipped to face this pandemic because of their low trust. Okay, in the government, and so they really uh, followed each and every norms that was stated. Now, if I look at uh, if I look at other countries here, uh, we find that Germany is a very high trust country. So they went for a less stringent lockdown, relying on the good intentions and the value of their citizens. Germany did not need any sort of provocative policing. while you know if i look at netherlands you can see i've written here they implemented what they called an intelligent lockdown because uh, the dutch government felt that uh, the people are not children and they understand the importance of the lockdown and they will likewise follow so the government did not go for any sort of harsh lockdown they intended and why they did not go that because you know no government wants to go for a lockdown because that is going to harm the economic engine of the country so obviously if they can have people in the economy who can be behave intelligently who can behave responsibly so they were ready to go with it and hence they can keep the will uh, uh, the wills of their engine economic engine running and if you know i mean sweden is the one country in the world which basically did not have any official lockdown at all because it believed in freedom under responsibility so we found out these are the countries which did not really uh, go for that harsh lockdown
সুজাতা হ্যাঁ দিদি বল আমি আছি কিওর অডিবল প্লিজ গো আহেড সুজাতা বলছি যে বোধহয় আজকে নেটওয়ার্ক খুবই কষ্টকর করছে না আবার উনিও চলে গেলেন তাহলে কি ডক্টর মনোল কে একবার ডেকে নেব হ্যাঁ 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 चले गुनते ডক্টর মুখার্জি আপনি আমাকে শুনতে পাচ্ছেন হ্যাঁ আপনাকে শুনতে পাচ্ছি আমি শাশ্বতী কি মত বললো যে উনি চেক করছেন দেখেন যদি উনি চেক করতে পারেন নিশ্চয় নিশ্চয় আপনার কথা এই মিটটা একটু প্রবলেম হয়েছিল না আপনিই বলছিল হ্যাঁ আমার মাইক মাইক্রোফোন একটু সেটিংস এ গন্ডগোল ছিল হ্যালো হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ শাশ্বতী ম্যাডাম শুনতে পাচ্ছি शेषाम मंडल Yes yes that's fine thank you that's fine thank you okay i am uh, i i as as people have told me that uh, i have finished with romania chorse school so i will start off with the high trust countries now uh, romania was a country was an example of a low trust country because there people did not have trust in the government now if i look at certain countries which are which are very high trust countries like the mainly the three countries i'm going to explain here germany netherlands and sweden now we find in the case of uh, germany uh, it's a very high trust country uh, but it had a very lenient lockdown because it uh, and it also clocked the least fatality rate you know the main reason for germany clocking a very low fatality rate is because it basically followed the south korean model of testing and tracking okay and people had huge trust in the government because they think that there is rational decision making at the highest level of the government so they followed blindly what the german government told the people to do and so we find that uh, germany mirrored a better picture of the pandemic relative to their european counterparts why but if i look at other, uh, at the other high trust economies uh if i look at the other high trust economies like the dutch for that matter uh they implemented what is essentially called a very intelligent lockdown because the dutch prime minister reportedly said that my people are not children i do not consider them to be children and i don't treat them like children so i i i believe that they are going to follow their rationality and go for a very very intelligent lockdown 
And as per Sweden, I know all of you know that it was one of those countries which basically had no government lockdown at all. Because there the people believed under freedom, under responsibility. That is the quote that is used by the Swedes. That is freedom under responsibility. So they thought that the people were responsible enough to understand the norms of lockdown and likewise behave. So Sweden and Germany and uh, the Netherlands, they were European countries which never reached maximum stringency because the trust level in these countries, they are basically the high trust countries in Europe. Now, if I, if I look at this uh, nature, does it really imply that, uh, 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 that because they are very high trust countries, they will not be having a uh, corona infection death at a very high level? That was not the case. Germany did have low death rates. But if we look at Dutch, if we look at the Netherlands and the Swedish people, we find that their death rates were very high. Their infection rate, fatality rate, everything was quite high. So we can say that, finally, we can say that trust, I cannot rely on trust only to find out that uh, infection rates are going to go down even if I do not impose an effective lockdown because trust basically is acting as a double aged soul because on one hand, because there is trust and I'm going for linear lockdown, my economic engine is running. But on the other hand, I can falter in terms of the coronavirus infection and the fatality rates. So instead of ripping the dividend of high trust, these countries might have just been pushed to the rear and lulled into a false sense of security. High trust has lulled them into or tempted them into a sense of false security and that resulted in the high level of infection in these countries. So at the end of my speech, uh, basically the most important thing that I would like to point out is that at this point of time, as I have said, our society, our behavior is undergoing a sea change. So we need to understand our social fabric, value it, and this basically has given the birth to the concept of social capital. Because we also feel that social capital can contribute to the health outcomes of the people at the micro level. Even the World Bank have uh, propounded the fact of social capital as a missing link in development. So in the context of the present pandemic, a higher social capital could imply greater in-person interaction and a risk of contracting the infection. That's there. But on the other hand, as I have discussed earlier, social capital can endow individuals with a greater concern for others as it is associated with greater trust and relationships within a community. This may lead to more hygienic practices and social distancing leading to lockdowns becoming more effective and meaningful. As I have referred to the World Value Survey data, in that data, you may, if you ever go and visit the data site, you will find data on trust. How can I trust my neighbor? How much do I trust my neighbor? How much do I trust a stranger? How much do I trust my friend? How much do I trust my relatives? Everything is there, which implies that suppose uh, in these pandemic times, I have contracted this infection. And if I live in a society where the trust parameter is very high, then my neighbors will trust me wholly, thinking that if she has infection, she will never come out of the house. She is never going to do anything that is not the norm during these times. Okay, So if this trust parameters is high, if our social capital is high, we can fight this pandemic in a much more better. Thank you. Thank you, madam, for such a the informative session, despite the many hurdles. Thank you very much. And I think there is no question in the chat box. So, may I request Dr. Mondol? Hello, Dr. Mondol, can you hear me? Y yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, you can proceed, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, do you want me to start? Yes, yes, sir. Oh, yeah, the first, uh, uh, sorry for this uh, mishap. Uh, you just realize like some of the challenges of COVID like situation, even the technology sometimes fails. But having said that, I, uh, first, I'd like to thank Dr. Shoma Ghosh and Dr. Shonali Mukherjee for inviting me on behalf of Hiralal Mujumdar Memorial College for Women uh, in this uh, seminar. It's a, it's a great honor.
and it was great to hear Dr. Shashri Chaudhary's presentation. It was a very good presentation. So what I'm going to do next is that I'm going to share a slide and I'll just try to present uh, some scenarios. So just... हाँ <laughs> स्क्रीन देखी हेलो शास्त्री मैम आप प्रेजेंटिंग कर चुके हैं क्या ना एवर देखा जाता है ना कार्ड ना शास्त्री का डंकी स्टॉप प्रेजेंटिंग कर चुके हैं क्या ना सी माय स्क्रीन हाँ ये वो तो हॉबी वाला हॉबी था ओके ओके थैंक यू सॉरी या सो this all this mesa and we already realized some of the challenges as i said about so michael's presentation is primarily focused on the impact of covid-19 on labor market uh, i am a labor economist by training uh, i do macro labor kind of stuff so i thought perhaps it's better to focus on the labor market because it's a very unique kind of situation we are facing so let me first uh, discuss like what makes covid-19 economic crisis unique why it's very different first of all this is a negative supply shock aggregate supply shock unlike the 2008 financial crisis which was an aggregate demand shock now just to differentiate between the two so why it's a supply shock because it's primarily affecting the production process of a society for example like we can't just simply go to work that's why the production stopped and as a result the whole crisis is unfolding on the other hand during the 2008 2009 the big financial crisis that happened 10 years back that was a demand shock because that's looked at the consumer side because people didn't have the money to purchase so there was a huge collapse of the demand but covid 19 from the economist perspective this is a aggregate supply shock it is global in nature and it disrupts the labor market activities rather than destroys capital which is very important because most of the other supply shocks like uh, natural disaster often destroys capital but covid is not destroying capital rather it's destroying workers it's killing people and that's a very uh, it's that's why it's a bigger problem uh, in a global context it's a major public health implications and it already affected 20 million people as of two days back when i created this slide i'm sure this number has gone up and it already killed 730000 people throughout this world that's a, that's a huge number 
even in the us which is the one of the worst affected countries already 165000 people died because even in a developed country like the united states uh, so this is a, for for a long time we never faced such a big hurdle in uh, in human history since the world war 2 it literally brought the whole world economy into a grinding halt it just everything just stopped as if like somebody came and just pressed the pause button and it just stopped uh, the whole society throughout the world and finally the biggest problem is this we don't see a foreseeable problem uh, we can't just see a solution to this problem because there's a lot of imperfect, uh, imperfect knowledge and uncertainties uh, even we don't know when the vaccine is going to come out. Russia just declared their vaccine has come out yesterday, but the problem is that that vaccine is not properly tested yet. So we don't know the, even the effectiveness or the side effects of these vaccines. And we really don't know how long it's going to take. And what we don't know is that once it is even implemented, how well people are going to respond to this as to build on dr choudhury's presentation she talked about trust right uh, I, I don't know how many people will trust a vaccine which hasn't been tested properly so that itself to say like if people refuse us to take vaccine then what do you do so i'm going to divide this whole presentation into four major questions so first major question is was the extent of the economic crisis so what kind of crisis we are looking at second it's very important we should be able to see what kind of recovery we are looking at because crisis is one thing crisis happens a lot of crises happen in the, our societies especially economic crisis but in most of the other crises before economic crises we knew how it's going to recover but right now with this particular situation it's itself in, is an uncertain proposition Third, I'm going to focus on the impact on the labor market, and then I'm going to make some effective policy responses. What are the policy responses? In the end of the day, it's very difficult to make policies in an uncertain future. So we'll try to see what has worked uh, well historically. So let's first focus on the extent of the economic crisis. Now let's talk about the channels. The, there are three channels, in my opinion, by which COVID-19 impact the economy. One is this, it increased the cost of doing business and, result, and hence resulting unemployment. So just to live in open a business right now, first of all, in many p uh, countries due to lockdown, they just closed down the business, right? So they can't even open. Even in countries where they're opening it up, there are a lot of increased cost cost in sense of like they have to take proper care, they have to put new ventilation system. All this has implications from the supply side because uh, in many places, businesses are closing down. If businesses are closing down at a high rate, it will lead to a lot of unemployment. Second channel is change in consumer preference. Uh, just to take our profession, we, I believe many of us are in the education profession, see how we are delivering lectures, how we are doing uh, 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 conferences, it's online. And there's a good chance moving forward in future, many students who are, is actually the consumer for educational services, they might demand this kind of online education, which actually helps them to take it wherever they want, it gives them flexibility or in our own personal preferences. A lot of people have stopped going to restaurants completely. Uh, rather, they have started cooking at home or they are uh, availing the food delivery services, but people are just avoiding going out to buy stuff. So this is, again, change in consumer preference. And finally, there's a re-evaluation of country risks. Uh, the way we measured country risk was more in terms of till now was more economic aspects of how many industries they have. We never thought a pandemic can affect a country. And what we are seeing, certain countries are affected more than other countries. And even we don't know why certain countries are affected more than other countries. And I'm sure a lot of PhD thesis will be written uh, in future based on this COVID-19 experience. So these are the three possible channels through which 
COVID can impact the economy. And again, the full extent of this crisis is still unknown. We really don't know uh, where it's going, when it's going to stop, where it's going to end, because it's all speculations right now. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, do you have any slides? Are you showing any slides? The slide is, uh, we can't see any slides. Oh, you can't see the slide? Oh. No. Oh. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I'm sorry. I don't know yeah. what's going on. Thank you, sir. Now we can see it. You can see the slide now? Yes, yes. Now we can see. Oh. Sir, sir, please make it full screen. Okay, so hold on. Can you see now? Hello, can you see the slide? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see the slide, but can you make it full screen? Yeah, now it's fine. Can you see it? Yes, we can see it. And is we it can full see screen? It, sir. Please continue. Okay, okay. I'm really sorry. Like I am, uh, I'm not. Really... <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. I'm glad that you can see it now. Okay. Oh. So next is like, uh, let's look at some data, right? Data is important in economics. At least we rely on data, and nowadays social sciences do rely on data a lot. So let's see what we learned till now. So first, according to some estimates that there's a good chance that global economic growth may decrease by 6%. So it's not rate of growth, it's that actual decrease in the size of the economy. So it's basically saying, telling you is that if you have made uh, 100 rupees this year, next year you are going to make 6 rupees less. That's what it's basically saying. So uh, that's, that's a huge problem because we are not used to a negative economic growth. We are used to a slow economic growth, but not negative economic growth. Just to give a specific idea, uh, example, just last month, this month, early this month, uh, US GDP growth rate came up. Actually on an annualized rate, US GDP actually decreasing at a rate of 32.9%. That's huge. We haven't seen this kind of decrease uh, even during the Great Depression. And that's understandable because it's just the production just stopped. Uh, I'm sure in uh, uh, when the data from India comes out, we'll be seeing something like this because I have some data that I'm going to show you in a bit about India as well. Uh, trade, which we all rely on, right? We, uh, as a developing country, we all rely on trade. And there's a 32% decline in world merchandise trade. That itself is, again, again, huge hit for the developing countries. According to UN, already upward of 200 million people have lost jobs in this COVID-19. That's, that's, that's uh, unthinkable uh, in any kind of like global scale. Uh, just to give again a specific example from US and uh, because US generally comes up with data pretty quickly. I'm sure similar kind of data will be coming out in other countries as well. There are 32 million people who claim for jobless uh, unemployment benefits since the start of COVID in March 2020. And there's an estimate that US unemployment rate may at some point hit 20%. Uh, just to give you the context, all of you have heard of the Great Depression of the 1930s. At that time, US unemployment rate was 25%. So we are pretty much hitting that Great Depression era uh, uh, unemployment. And you can imagine what happened during the Great Depression. We ended up having Nazis in Germany and Mussolini in Italy, and we ended up fighting World War II. So, and that Great Depression actually continued for, the effects of Great Depression continued for almost more than 10 years. And just in China, which is one of the fastest growing economy, and we rely on China uh, to buy our stuff because Chinese consumers is a big part of the world economy right now. And there's an 80% decline in car sales in China. So these are like huge changes, and we really don't know how to uh, uh, address this crisis. So, and as I said, like world economy, we are in a historic recession and it is comparable to the Great Depression that we had almost 70, 80 years back. 
So now I'm going to focus on India a little bit. Uh, so th what this shows is the index of industrial production in India. Uh, so this is an index. So you have to compare. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Yes, sir. Okay. And you can see the slides, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So what this you will see here is the indus, index of industrial production for India. This is from uh, National Statistics Office, Government of India. Uh, so in January 2009, this index was hovering around 140. Okay, so this is an index. So you have to compare with this 140. By April 20, this index is 56.3. There's a almost 84 point decrease in this index. Like it's a more than 50% decline in the production process in India. That's a huge decline. And if you imagine what's happened next, unemployment. This is uh, from Center for Monitoring Indian Economy. Uh, what you see, this yellow line is the urban unemployment rate. This blue line is the rural unemployment rate. So both urban and rural was hovering around anywhere between 6 to 10% prior to the COVID-19 lockdowns, and then look at the unemployment rate. In uh, urban areas, we're hitting anywhere between 25 to 30%, so is in the rural areas. Uh, now it started coming down because we came out of lockdown, but again, there's a huge hit to the demand in this particular uh, time between April to May, when uh, actually we know, like we heard the stories where laborers from big cities were heading back to their villages because there was no jobs and they were forced to go back. Uh, finally, the uh, conf how confident are Indian consumers? Uh, again, this is uh, a time series data around March uh, uh, 2019. Uh, According to current situation index and futures expectation, current situation is what you expect about the situation today. And future expectation index, the yellow line actually measures what you expect the future looks like. This is a pretty high, right? India had like in more than 100 in terms of current situation index and close to 130 for future expectation index. But today, uh, around April 2020, we are looking at a CSI of 63.7 instead of 100 plus a year back. Uh, sir, may I disturb you? It is the same slide or the next slide, sir? Which one? Is it? Uh, we are seeing the extent of economic crisis. Uh, oh, so, so this yes, slides are you, not. Sir. Okay, can you, you see right now? Yes, sir. How oh, confident are Indian consumers? Okay, okay, so it was not okay. showing up. Okay, yes, sir. Now, okay, so actually let me do this way, in that way, and just let me know if you don't see, it, if, if there's a mismatch between what I'm saying. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay, I'm sorry for that. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, the uh, consumer confidence I index that we are looking at. And clearly there's a huge decrease in confidence, and we all know if consumers are not confident, they are not going to consume. They are not going to buy stocks. Uh, and uh, what would be the impact? Uh, so that and that's a huge challenge for economics. So next, I'm going to focus on the recovery. Uh, so there are challenges to even predict the recovery. So the best case scenario is a V-shaped recovery, which means that it's very sharp decline in the economy, but the recovery is also equally sharp. So it's kind of V-shaped. So it goes, comes fast, it goes away fast. So that is the best case scenario. But unfortunately, we are not seeing that. Rather, we are seeing more likely scenarios are either U-shaped or W-shaped recovery. Rather, with the updated data, we are looking at U-shaped. That means it decreases, then it stays low for an extended period of time. And then it again started going up. W-shaped would be, uh, my personal hunch is that W shape is not the reality anymore. It's under W shape, it would be a steep fall, steep rise, and a steep fall. The reason for the steep rise and steep fall in a very short period of time, expectation was that new waves of COVID is going to hit. And that actually happening right now, we are going through the next phase of COVID throughout the world. And 
again by october november flu season is going to start in the western world and we don't know how covid-19 is going to react during the flu season and no way we can vaccinate all the people in this world in next 6 months uh, that's simply impossible so we are pretty much looking at u shape and let's hope we don't have the l shape recovery l shape means that stiff fall and it remains slow for a extended period of time let's hope that we are not ending up in that situation so now based on the recovery it will depend what kind of impact will be on the labor market and impact on the labor market depends on the nature of recovery and most probably it will be a u shaped recovery now question is that if it's a u shaped recovery which means that it decreases stays low for an extended period of time and then it increases again economy recovers what impact can be on the labor market can be classified into short term versus long term and then local versus global because the reality is this we are all living in a global world we can stop trade but the fact is that we simply just can't stop it just to give an example i know that a lot of sentiment is uh, propagated in india right now not to buy chinese products right uh, for different reasons because of uh, the border incursions by china recently and our political geopolitical situation with china but amazon india recently just concluded their uh, big sale and the number one selling product was the chinese made cell phones so the reality is that we live in a global world and we should learn how to live with this reality and then second thing short term versus long term so first i'm going to focus on this short term versus long term scenarios like what are the short term scenarios and long term so in the short term obviously there will be a huge increase in unemployment rate there's 30 to 35% unemployment rate which is unthinkable even in a country like india we have on an average 10% unemployment rate uh, in us uh, before the covid us unemployment rate was one of the historically lowest around 3 and a half percent which is absolutely low right now we are more than 10% in us india also we are hovering around anywhere between 15 to 20% my second concern is this this negative aggregate supply shock which means stoppage of businesses may eventually translate into negative aggregate demand shock because people will just stop spending because people will, if they have no jobs they don't have money and and we all kind of like like to save for our uh, 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 like uh, for the for future and we might end up saving more money mind you if we spend less we if we spend less money in our restaurants that means we are taking away money from those restaurants owners so it just stops the circulation of the money and it can lead to a different kind of or it can aggravate the uh, situation and finally uh this is which we even right now even we don't have data this this high short term job separations due to un- unemployment make may make di- recovery even more difficult due to labor market frictions so for example like if you are uh, uh, running a restaurant and if you are cook because your restaurant's closed down you just uh, perhaps laid off your uh, cook right now there's a good chance you may not get back that cook again in future when your restaurant open uh so it there's it's very difficult to match right people with the right kind of skill once you let go from a particular job so this has huge cost for the economy as a whole because it will be very difficult to fill up the positions even when the economy opens uh so that those are short term impacts Uh, now i'm going to focus a little bit on the longer term impacts uh now it is a major concern is that if lot of people remain unemployed for an extended period of time it may make those people obsolete we know in certain fields especially in uh, information technology services how the technology is evolving if somebody without a job for a couple of years that person might be obsolete because technology has just moved on there might be new people who might be better equipped with the new technology so what you do with those people who are unemployed for an extended period of time 
Second concern in a longer term, now firms or businesses might just invest more on automation because machines don't get affected by viruses, right? But human beings do. So they might just go out and uh, automate the production process, which is again happening a lot, especially with the extremely low interest rate. You know, like throughout the world, interest rate has been de uh, decreased to help with investment. Now for the business owners, which essentially means that, hey, let's borrow money and put some robots instead of putting human beings, then we don't have to worry about hiring people. Third, there can be increase in relative demand for gig economy workers like Uber drivers or door dashers or Zomato delivery people. We, there's a huge increase in demand for this kind of services. Not Uber because Uber happened like people stopped riding, but food delivery services are booming. This is one of the most booming industry right now, food delivery service. And all these apps like DoorDash or Zomato or Yelp, they are doing great business in terms of uh, 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 popping up the demand for gig economy. But again, we all know this gig economy, which is very uncertain, very insecure, not very traditional. It's, it, 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 it has a lot of human cost. Then we have a negative impact on labor morale and productivity. We all know like how this lockdown situation is affecting our mental health because people are stuck in their homes. There's a lot of uncertainty. Many people don't have jobs. So it's going to affect productivity. And finally, what's, uh, another important thing is the rise in income inequality and which might actually deteriorate our faith in our existing inst institutional framework right we just increase the distrust for government their failures and in the end it might lead to more dictatorial uh, or authoritarian powers which we are seeing a lot we have countries like brazil even in us with trump right like uh, there are a lot of tendencies toward this authoritarian rule even within a democratic uh, framework that's 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 these are some of the longer term impacts of impact of covid as i said a Great Depression led to the World War II. Uh, so if we don't curtail the negative impacts of COVID-19 sooner, we really don't know what's going to happen next. Uh, let's now focus on local versus global impact. And locally, what's going to happen? So certain industries will be wiped out. The countries or cities or towns which rely on tourism for their uh, economy is going to be obliterated, right? It's like how many people are going to go to uh, for it, uh, tourist places? Very few. Airlines, airline uh, travel has declined more than 50%. People don't, don't feel safe to travel. Uh, retail sales, people don't want to go to stores anymore. Everything they are basically ordering through online. So that's, again, basically, again, this will be the pocket because a lot of local businesses will be suffering. Uh, and another impact can be like there can be a decline of bigger cities. Already, like what we are saying, people started moving out from bigger cities because most of the time people live in bigger cities because of work situations. If your work is can be done remotely, why you, somebody needs to live in a big city? So there's a good chance this pressure on big cities might actually decline. But that can have implications in terms of property values. If people stop living in bigger cities, that might have implications in decreasing the property value. And we all know that if we feel less wealthy, we are going to consume less, we are going to spend less. So this has impact in terms of, again, on the local economy. Uh, some of the global impacts, obviously promotion of uh, remote work culture. Already Google said that they are operating virtually till 2021. Amazon also said the same thing. Uh, there are talks going on right now of running the whole colleges and universities virtually. Uh, so, and think about this, like uh, when uh, work can be done from anywhere in this world, so this national boundaries vanishes. So many, so somebody sitting in India might be doing work which is based my, out of Australia or but in maybe Vietnam or maybe Malaysia. So uh, this opens opportunities, 
but also it opens up risks and uncertainties for the working class in this world. Uh, so outsourcing is going to go up because right now you really don't need to be in anywhere uh, specific to do your job. You can be pretty much anywhere in this world. Uh, second, it drastically going to reduce both domestic and international migration. Uh, we all know that both domestic and international migration plays an important role in terms of uh, ensuring that uh, that right kind of resources are available all the time. If think about if within India, uh, all the rural uh, migrating workforce stops coming to cities to do work, and we even don't know how to uh, carry out the businesses in our urban setup anymore. Then disruption of supply chain. Uh, so already like um, due to the closures in China, because which is the manufacturing hub for this world, what we are saying, there's an increase in prices for some of the manufactured products. Uh, it's very easy to go and check the how some of the electronic product prices has gone up recently because of supply uh, related disruptions. Because we live in a global world and we live in a very diversified production system. If the supply chain breaks down, uh, in a short term, we have no efficient way of running the supply mechanism. Just to give you an example, uh, there's a huge shortage of face masks in US. Now, face masks is, is a very cheap product, but the problem is this, nobody in the United States produces this face masks. The country dependent on uh, foreign countries to import those face masks. Now, when those production stop in those countries, in the US, there was a huge shortage of face masks. So face mask prices went up by almost 5,000%. So there's a big increase. And most of, many people died in the US simply because there was not enough ventilators to provide, uh, which is, again, a huge problem because our production process stopped. And finally, as I said previously, there will be increase in demand for certain kind of services like home delivery services. Uh, whether it's good, I don't know, because we all know people who work in this uh, delivery services definitely is not the best paid people in the uh, profession. So these had implications. So these are some of the global and local impact. Uh, finally, like I'm going to talk about some policy responses. Again, policy responses can be short term or longer term. So first, first focus on the short term policy response. Short term, stabilize the aggregate demand, provide generous unemployment benefits or direct cash transfer or guaranteed employment programs like NREGA, because this is how you sustain the demand because people who are losing jobs, you know, need to provide income because if they stop consuming, companies or businesses are going to go out of business. So it's important that aggregate demand needs to be stabilized by whatever way, maybe government just providing direct cash transfer, thus helicopter uh, money drop often in economics, what we say. Uh, second, provide low cost credit lines to businesses, which is actually happening. Interest rate is uh, historically very low. In the US, interest rate is close to 0%. Uh, uh, even if you account for inflation rate in India, interest rate is very low, which you can see based on your, your savings account interest rate, which is actually going down by each day. Uh, so, but again, idea here is that that will help to uh, keep the cost of credit low, that will help the businesses to expand. And finally, like in the short term, at least, there has to be a right balance between possible infection and gradual opening of the economy. Uh, now, in India, we did lockdown, but I'm not very clear how that lockdown really helped. Uh, because right now, when they came out of the lockdown, still infections are going up. So it's not about just close the uh, country for two months and then just open it up certain, uh, suddenly. You have to go step by step. Uh, but again, nobody knows was was the gradual opening of the economy looks like. Again, we have to rely on the experiences from other countries. Some of the longer term policies. First, we need to cooperate at the cross-national level. 
we need to strengthen institutions like world health organizations or uh, uh, or uh, international labor organization we need to strengthen them to uh, take policies at the global level and second perhaps in future we institute policies like universal basic income now there have been talks about in india even in us uh, that no matter who you are if you are living in a country if you are citizen of a country you should be eligible for some basic income now why it's important because we are living in a very uncertain scenarios in an uncertain scenario only way you can bring certainty is if you provide a steady source of income to its people now just to conclude obviously we haven't seen a disaster or pandemic of this scale in last 100 years uh so this is something very different uh secondly this is not a normal recession we all closed the economy deliberately that is not that uh, something wrong happened we just decided we don't want to operate anymore because of health reasons and we all know like uh, the last big pandemic we had was the spanish flu in 1918 uh and because of this uh, experiences from those uh, uh, pandemics there was a drastic shift in how the modern societies interact so covid 19 might be a inflection point in terms of how we interact in a society or how we behave what we value uh, and finally the great biggest challenge is this we need to recognize the unknown part uh policies needs to be informed it can't be by whim or by dictate but unfortunately there's a due to the rise of authoritarian powers what we are seeing is this policies are based on individual perceptions not based on data not based on uh, expert opinions so we need to bring it back because otherwise we are basically uh preparing for a bigger disaster because if this policies by whims fail it doesn't help anybody so i'm going to stop it here today uh, right now so i don't know if anybody has any questions or anything so i'm going to stop sharing uh, thank you sir uh, there is a question in the chat box may i uh, read it for you yes please thank uh we covid uh, it is from arup tata Will COVID-19 crisis bring a pandemic uh, shift in bringing global manufacturing hub from China to India? Okay, that's a loaded question. Okay, uh, <laughs> that's a good question, but that's a very relevant question as well. Uh, uh, so, one thing I can tell you is that based on the trends we are seeing. manufacturing is moving away from china that's for sure whether it will come to india or not that i am not very sure i know right now a lot of manufacturing is moving to uh uh countries like uh, vietnam uh the problem in india many of the manufacturers do face is lack of infrastructure because we still have lot of electricity problem road problem uh so and also there's a issue of well trained workers because we as a country did a very bad job in terms of spending in education and day by day our expenses uh, government investment in education is actually declining it's not going up uh, and uh, and so i can't talk about whether it will come to india or not but obviously there are good chances if india take right policies there's no reason it can't come recently actually apple started producing some of the apple products in india like iphones and ipads and they moved it from china to india so there are opportunities question is that how much our political establishment are interested in it which i can't comment on right now thank you sir uh, dr orindo mandal very nicely explained the extent of economic crisis about different and about different shapes of recovery he also discussed the impact of labor market in long term and short term and global market and local market he talked about some and long term and short term policies 
although they were at the beginning there were so many hindrances and obstacles we were able to recover the situation the network problem and anything and we hope we will also recover the situation of covid 19 thank you sir uh, thank you uh, very much pleasure thank dr sujata mukhopadhyay are you here hello hello uh, uh, dr sujata mukhopadhyay will you please introduce dr kothakoli banerjee yes madam yes madam to amra uh, dr arindam mondoder bhashan sunlam kichu jantrik holo jok hoa shottyo asha kori apnader prottekei bhalo legeche ebar jake deke debo tini dr kothakoli bondopadhyay to tar age ektu khani tar somporke boleni ডক্টর কথাকলি বন্দ্যোপাধ্যায় তার আইসিএসসি করেন সেন্ট স্টিফেন স্কুল এবং আইএসসি অক্সিলিয়াম কনভেন্ট থেকে লেডি প্রেবন কলেজ থেকে স্নাতক ডিগ্রি লাভ করেন ডক্টর বন্দ্যোপাধ্যায় এবং পরবর্তীকালে ভূগোল নিয়ে স্নাতকোত্তর করেন কলকাতা বিশ্ববিদ্যালয় থেকে এখান থেকে তিনি জুনিয়র ও সিনিয়র রিসার্চ ফেলো হিসেবে গবেষণা করেন এছাড়াও আন্নামালা ইউনিভার্সিটি থেকে পপুলেশন স্টাডিজ নিয়ে স্নাতকোত্তর করেন এবং পিজি ডিপ্লোমা করেন এডুকেশনাল অ্যাডমিনিস্ট্রেশন অ্যান্ড সুপারভিশনের উপর ডক্টর বন্দ্যোপাধ্যায় এম বি এ করেছেন সেন্ট জেভিয়ার্স কলেজ এবং পন্ডিচেরি ইউনিভার্সিটি থেকে ট্রেনিং বেসিসে উইমেন্স কলেজ আশুতোষ কলেজ শ্রীরামপুর কলেজ সেন্ট জেভিয়ার্স কলেজ ও বিদ্যাসাগর ইউনিভার্সিটিতে বিভিন্ন সময় তিনি কর্মরত ছিলেন পশ্চিমবঙ্গ ভূগোল মঞ্চ থেকে জুনিয়র সায়েন্টিস্ট হিসেবে তাকে পুরস্কৃত করা হয় ডক্টর বন্দ্যোপাধ্যায় লেখা প্রকাশিত হয়েছে ভূগোলিকা ডিকার্ভ পাবলিকেশন এবং ইএসএন থেকে এছাড়াও দুটি বইয়ের প্রকাশনায় তিনি সহকারী সম্পাদক তিনি এখন সুবর্ণরেখা মহাবিদ্যালয় সহকারী অধ্যাপক হিসেবে কার্যরত এবং জঙ্গলমহলের মহিলাদের বিষয় নিয়েও তিনি কাজ করে চলেছেন নিরন্তর ডক্টর কথাকলি বন্দ্যোপাধ্যায় আপনাকে অনেক স্বাগত জানাই এবং আপনার বক্তব্য পরিবেশন করানোর জন্য অধিক অনুরোধ করছি অনেক ধন্যবাদ ডক্টর সুজাতা মুখোপাধ্যায় ভেরি গুড আফটারনুন টু অল আই প্রোভাইড ফার্স্টলি মাই হার্ট ফেল গ্র্যাটিউড টু ডক্টর সোমা ঘোষ দ অনারেবল প্রিন্সিপাল অফ হিরার আল মাজুমদার মেমোরিয়াল কলেজ ফর ওমেন ফর প্রোভাইডিং মি দ্য অপরচুনিটি টু অ্যাক্ট এজ এ স্পিকার I also provide my heartfelt gratitude to Sri Pradipta Mukherjee, webinar committee convener, and last but not the least to my dear Shonali Di, Dr. Shonali Mukherjee, and Dr. Pritha Kundu, the joint organizers of this webinar. Uh, without losing any time, I will be directly entering into my part. Uh, shall I be uh, presenting my screen? Uh, yes, you can start. Okay. Is it audible? I'm, am I audible? Is it audible? Totally audible. Yes, and the screen is visible, ma'am? Yes, yes visible. Okay. okay. Thank you. Now, basically, we know that COVID crisis has truly changed our concept and has definitely made an impact on our modern life. The true aspect of pandemic has more or less affected each and every actions of the world and have truly made the human beings at a stake and you know the human beings have turned out to be someone and they don't know that how to fight with such invisible virus the effect of this pandemic has been for a long time and definitely uh, though this pandemic is only 6 month old and people are mostly aware of its devastating effect it is being found to be consensus in every field but we cannot wait as we do not have any stipulated time period and we do not know that when it will come to an end so at this stage as far as the uh, topic of the webinar i could only say that don't worry about things you can't control now what is this new normal now this covid is going to stay for 100 years no 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 don't get panic it's not the covid but definitely the pandemic may go in the next two or three years but its effect which i'm talking about will be remaining for next 100 years so if we look at the various reports and everything and whatever news that is coming up in various newspapers we will find that there are a great setback to various women employees 
of losing jobs, of deduction in salary and also tanti, insecurity in their present jobs. But is it so? If we look at the reports of the journals, the WHO's declaration, we will analyze that every woman has been going through a very gloomy time. The gloomy faces of this walking woman has become the sign criteria of this modern world. But don't we think of unlocking this gloomy face into a happy face? Definitely we can do it because with no jobs and moreover with more and more family pressure, women has now turned into a nuisance in their home. But it is the right time to make them happy. And what are the various opportunities and jobs that can be asserted to the women of this modern sector? Now, let me first analyze that who is a woman entrepreneur? Woman entrepreneur may be defined as a woman or group of women who initiate, organize, and run a business enterprise. But however, hell thou. In this pandemic time where we have no opportunity of business, how could we thought of having a woman entrepreneur who, is, who are really losing their entity? If we once again look at the various war reports and journals, the three common terms that we are going to view is loss and failure, cry and hue, and loss of financial support. Just wait for a few seconds. We know that COVID-19 has snatched various opportunities from our hand, but has created others. I have tried to reconstruct the word opportunity from where I have derived the three parts. If you look at the word oppo, it always means opposition. But you see the two letters that is R and T. Can we not enlarge or accommodate R for recover and T for try? Now, this is possible only when your family is united or rather your family support has been given to you. So don't be unhappy and just wait for a few seconds to see what is going on. Now, what is a home-based business? A home-based business is basically a venture, whether it can be a full-time or it can be right as a side hustle, that one can start and operate using one's own home as the base of operation. So what are the criteria, or why should we move for home-based business? A low investment business idea has very few overhead costs. The cost of uh, undamming a business from your home is definitely very low. The option to sell products or services locally or internationally is always being provided when you do business from home. When you have a flexible work and life balance, which you don't need to move out, as Sir was telling in the previous presentation, that now you can work from home. You don't have that hustle and tussle to move out from your home and to move or migrate to your workplace. You have to go through the so many curses and everything. Creation of a family business where the relations of one's spouses can help if required. Now, I know that as a woman, there are certain questions that evolves around us. How to work from home? When to work from home? Household course? How to look after the household? So many work to be done in a house. And obviously, child bondage is always there. Especially in countries like India, where social customs plays the most important role. Another part is in-law's opinion or husband's permission. However, it's you who have to look into that venture. You yourself have to find out your own strength. You have to identify the work which you find to do at ease. Try to identify the work which gives you an immense pleasure. So then only a business will be successful when you appreciate your own strength, the work that you do easily, and the work that gives you pleasure. You, with these three intimate words, you can turn your business into a great opportunity. What are the new opportunities that have come up during this COVID time? YouTube channels. We have seen, if you are all of us are Facebook bloggers, and you see there are so many groups coming out, like Mission Impossible, 3 Nayan, and so many groups, where there are constant household women. They're selling kurtas, they're selling jewelries, they're selling food items and whatnot. Email boosting. Email boosting is you are constantly producing and boosting your job opportunities at the email of various customers. Knocking through WhatsApp, I think that's the most important part. Let's see, I have been initiated with a business. Please look at through these photos in the WhatsApp. That's the most easiest part that we are having in this scenario. 
Now we have to innovate products to sell from home. Some products which are already in market and where there are a lot of competitors, those products might create a less helpfulness from your part. But if you innovate a new product and put it on the Facebook group, in the Ledis group, in the WhatsApp group, uh, you can get a lot of customer benefits from this part. A group combination, and we all know that in this pandemic world, the digital marketing has come up with a new burst. We have Instagram, we have blogs, we have rooms. You will find out that Facebook with, has come up with create rooms concept, the email moving, and obviously we have the idea of search engine optimization. Now, homemade products. This is another most important scenario, or rather the most lucrative product in this part of the pandemic area. If you could ensure that your product is homemade, it is sanitized, you will, uh, you will be getting a lot of customer base, whether you choose to start on an e-marketplace or you want to build your own branded storefront. This is the right time during pandemic when hobbies can be turned into your business. Uh, could you write? Do you love to write? Obviously, there are a lot of options from blog, posts and newsletters to articles and copywriters. There are always people who are looking for writers. Check with some of the major freelance sites. You could put your writing on the sites. And if the writing serving looked and been cited by various people, you are going to get a lot of money, like Upwork, Freelancer, Guru. And you see how they can offer up your writing service. This is some of the examples. At least use some skills virtually. You try to use some skills which you couldn't have used, basically showing your skills to your within your family niche, within your family members. Now you use the virtual best to showcase that skills to the whole world. You can cash out any of your skills, of which skills you know. You can be a YouTuber and earn in lakhs per month, which will grow ever with a payment securing your old age and beyond your life for your family. Now you have a concept that whenever I will be doing a YouTube video, that YouTube video must be showing uh, something personal of mine. I need to act, I need to do, I need to sing, I need to dance. Not at all. You can make a YouTube video by taking, you know, a lot of images that are free sites like Pixabay and all. You can take sounds like from Ben Sound and all where you can make a video and you just post in a YouTube, maybe in the form of motivational one, maybe in the form of an entertainment one where your face will not be shown. But if that video is being liked by a lot of people, you're going to earn a lot of money. In the recent endeavor, Malina Bibi of Bangladesh, she has incurred of skill of how to make cow dung paste, gote, what we call in Bengali, and has earned in lads. She has made a YouTube video of how to do or how to rather post a proper gote on her world. Her video has been shared and being enjoyed by many. Now, you must understand that home is also the best place for your innovation. Let me tell, I have taken three examples like Aditi Gupta, who is the founder of Menstropedia, Suchi Mukherjee, who is the founder and CEO of LimeRoad.com. Now, who are these people and why I'm showing their uh, pictures? Now, Menstropedia, obviously, I know there are a lot of people here, but still, you know, we do not feel like eagerly speaking about the menstruation cycle of women. Even, even today, about 70% of the women, Indian women, do not share their menstruation problem with their family members. So this is a site where you can ask, where you can post blog, you will get immediate answer and anything related to this thing. Naturally, Aditi Gupta has turned out to be of the most important woman entrepreneur in India. Suchi Mukherjee, who is the founder and CEO of LimeRoad.com. What is this LimeRoad.com tells us about? It just tells us about that how the how you're planning to move somewhere and you do not have any option, you don't have any kind of hotel bookings and all, and how to do this thing within a stipulated period of time. She only writes in her blog and lakhs and lakhs of people are watching her blog to become and, and moving for unwanted and good places to explore those areas. We all know about Nika, the very famous product, Nika, Falguni Nair is the CEO. Her beauty products has earned at least 8 lakh customers within the six months. You know, there are hundreds of them who are earning money from their home. Uh, do you remember your hobby, what you used to do in your childhood? Do you remember your first brush or the painting that you have made? Do you love to paint, sculpt or draw? 
if you are good at anything, you check out the site like Aqua. In fact, creative projects and jobs are being recognized. Do you love babies? Are you an expert in baby training? You know, after a baby is being born, a mother goes through a postpartum period. Now, often today, with um, newly uh, born babies and new mothers, especially walking in MNCs and urban areas, often do not get the free ideas of their in-laws of how to grow up a baby. You can be in 24 hours and 12 hours virtual babysitter from your own mobile, constantly looking after Vivian uh, baby and giving her the opinion to the newly well-groomed mother how to grow up that baby. Even the YouTube video of Nabida Chabani, you know, she's an old woman who lives in Dharvi slums, has earned a lot of fame and money, who has only shown the way how to massage, how to oil massage the newborn babies. Because this is a very new thing which most of the newly uh, mothers and new mothers are not at all aware of. Because this has been uh, going on in a generation from the background of her grandmothers and great grandmothers and so on. I have made a telephonic survey analysis when I get, got this topic from uh, uh, Shunalidi. Now, what I found some three, two or three assumptions, I'm just sharing it with you. About 65% of non-working household urban women have shown their willingness to earn money if it is from home and have flexible timing. About 70% of non-working urban women have confessed that they're digitally illiterate. They do not know how to handle computers and all. But they're willing to learn if proper opportunities are being provided to them. Don't panic. There are ways. About 46 of them has revealed that they do not know anything, basically other than chatting. Even one can use a chatting skills for earning money. Your gossip may range from Rhea Chakravarti's acquisition newly to that of your neighbors wearing a Benarasi mask. Go for socialsamosa.com. There you give the Indian tarka.com. You give your Indian tarka and Indian gossip and you will find that your gossip with the way you are speaking, the way you are talking is being shared by so many people and you will be earning money. Don't think ever that you are skilled or rather you are skillless. Can I talk continuously? Can I laugh continuously? Whatever be your skills, you must remember that every skill is paid. But, there is a but. It is only paid when you are outskilled in your speciality. Everyone can love, but you can love something uh, in a, some uh, lucid manner which is not at all being affected to normal people. Go for that. Go for uh, making a YouTube video and see how many people are liking that video. Uh, now, the main target of women entrepreneurs is obviously to be innovative and unique. Now, let me share you a business startup of Bonglish. Now, this Bonglish has become very famous, you know, during this COVID time. What they do now during this COVID time, most of the people, they are not moving out to the market for buying fishes and all. They do. It's a group formation or rather it's a business startup of 15 women who takes care of your fish that you're going to eat. You sit at your home, you order a fish, and you see they will be when, when they will be cooking the fish, they will be live streaming the video to you, either in WhatsApp or anything. So you are looking, it's a live barbecue. You are looking at your fish being cooked in a very sanitized manner or all, and you are happy, and they're just giving you the products at home. So COVID-19 is not a matter during or for any kind of business opportunities. Now, there are so many things. You can be a social media marketer, you can be seamstress, personal trainer, resume writer, speaker, membership site owner, uh, medical transcriptionist, web programmer, personal save, vertical, uh, virtual college, and SEO consultant, handmade invitation center, and so on. Now, pandemic era is obviously new to all of us, but the self-confidence which women requires for beginning a monetary errand should be present within. You must remember, once a customer is always a customer? No, that's the code word. Once a customer is not always a customer, because it is here, you have to go for making a customer niche. Now, if you're a content creator, you have a sizable online audience already, or you have always thought of starting your own blog, YouTube channel, or Instagram account, or even podcast then you can potentially grow and monetize your following using any of the previous idea of this list. 
on the top of that you can explore of becoming an affiliate now what is this affiliate that is when you are selling other products or services for a commission you have a bodhi or bhabhi who is not very you know versatile or not, uh, very shy you take the product from her and you assure her that i will sell the product and give you the money but definitely a commission part will be uh, uh, will be returned by me or accepting payment for any kind of sponsored post to give brands or chances that is to connect with your audience building a royal audience is the ultimate key necessity and obviously it requires patience consistency and focus now let us analyze few mantras and codes in this regard uh choose your skill use your skill show your skill please uh see the first letter of each and every sentence c u s okay train others with your skill optimize your niche market your skills energize your brain and rationalize your product t o m e r so it's what you require to be a or rather what you require to hold someone who is your customer uh the potential to monetize your customer often depends on the niche you choose to serve you have to choose a particular niche whether it should be an instagram whether it should be a youtube whether it should be a blog or a podcast uh before i end my uh, discussion i will give you an example of a mukherjee bodhi now mukherjee bodhi or bhavi has a passion of cooking so she started the business of home delivery from a house her customers mainly consist of old people and specifically of those people who do not have anyone to cook for them she is very famous especially among those in which either the son or daughter stays abroad and there is no one to help them at their own house naturally covid has made a large impact on it and delivery is being continued however to call anybody or to instruct anybody bodhi is often using you know a lot of uh, app appendices now what exactly happens is since the customer niche is mostly consisting of old people there are many people who are sugar patients so like they will ask they call up bodhi and say no 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 we don't want sugar in our food there are people who are suffering from uric acid don't put tomatoes and uh, so many things uh, pumpkins in our in our tarkaris now this has caused bodhi to analyze and to make various types of food now bodhi is puzzled if the customers varies from so many way and the whole time she is using utilizing to listen to them in her phone calls then what is to be done now this bengali bodhi was a great fan for bengali movies let's see what she has done she has initiated a food chart which is very easy to remember and type for her customer even for the old people you see she has used uttam now uttam is uttam kumar obviously whenever an old man is typing uttam in his phone she could understand that he that that man or the family wants urad dal tarkaris alu bhaji mango chutney uttam kumar that means it will be a non veg item kr katla k for katla r for roi suchitra sabji dal utche bhaji chola dal hinge alu dum and this things goes on so you see the technique she has you know with you know with it from a mind she only gets in a whatsapp number uttam or something the quote she is using and she understand the requirement of the customer older generation you see the code is used with maximum significance with b what i was telling that bina chini sugar bina jhal and the list goes on uh this is actually vg crisis what we think of and in chinese the word crisis is vg which is the which uh, rather consists of two characters that is v which means danger and g meaning opportunity now obviously in every crisis one must understand lies the seed of opportunity so this two word vg danger and opportunity comes together and this is a time of danger but also a time of opportunity so in this critical moment we should have a positive index in our mind which will definitely give us a positive result in a wisely handled risk except the pandemic and don't lose hope thank you thank you dr kothakoli bondopadhyay for such a nice session generally we find the number of participants goes on decreasing up uh, at the last of the session but here for the first time i am finding that the number went on increasing 
anyway we came to know so many about so many sites and thank you once again uh, now may i ask dr rupa shin for vote of thanks hello uh, hello yes ma'am i'm there yeah yes yes i can hear you i can hear you hello okay madam yeah hello yes okay uh, madam please Uh, no duty is uh, more urgent than that of returning thanks, and we have uh, finally come to an end. Anyways, good evening to our revered principal, Dr. Shoma Ghosh, our esteemed speakers, Dr. Arinda Mondal, Associate Professor, Siena College, New York, Department of Economics, Dr. Shaswat, Dr. Shaswati Chaudhary, Faculty of Economics, St. Xavier's College. Kathakali Chatterjee, Assistant Professor of Geography, Suborna Rekha Mahavidyalaya, my dear colleagues, friends, and other participants, it is a proud privilege and honor to propose the vote of thanks to all who have helped us in making the webinar a resounding success. I, on behalf of my college and entire team. including the organizing committee with dr shanali mukherjee faculty department of economics dr pritha kundu faculty department of english dr lipika mollik faculty of mathematics and bursar of the college sri pradeep mukherjee faculty of political science with our principal dr shoma ghosh at the helm the technical hands extended by shrimati pooja das faculty computer science Atrai Bhattacharya, Faculty of History, and all other participants of our fraternity who clubbed together. Uh, Rupa, uh, Doctor Sain, you are not audible. Please switch off your connection and uh, join again. It will, it may help you. Put off your connection and join again. But uh, before Rupa takes over, I must say that uh, every lecture. Was so wonderful and academically so illuminating, but I am really impressed with Dr. Chatterjee, and I am thinking of taking up uh, such measures after my retirement. Rupa, are you there? Yes, I am there. Okay, oh, fine, 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 fine. Yeah, yeah, you are audible now. Yeah. Now I was audible till the end. I hope. Was I audible till the end? No, no, no. Oh, for for some um, some time you were not audible. There were some technical issues. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the okay. this, uh, this may so happen. Please continue. Uh. Hello. Hello. Yes, Rupa. Yes, you are audible. Audible now. You are please absolutely continue. audible. Please continue, Rupa. Yeah. Rupa, madam, please continue. Yes. Uh, I I take the opportunity to thank all the honourable speakers for their fascinating lectures delivered this evening. I am convinced that all who were present today have since have surely enjoyed the session thoroughly, which was both intriguing. uh and informative it was also enriching 
and thought provoking i extend my sincere thanks to all our guest speakers for sharing their pedagogy their findings and opinions in their respective domains once again i thank all of you for your co cordial cooperation thank you thank you principal ma'am Oh, 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 what you have said, but we will after retirement definitely will look for this. So there is no point to lose hope, no. No, there, ma'am. No point that to lose hope. That you have taught. That you yeah. have taught us. As a woman, there is uh, there are a lot of obstacles in uh, in our life, but we should not be losing our hope. Thank you thank you